What we're going to be going over here is throughput costing. It could also be referred to as super variable costing. And what we're going to be looking at here is the cost flows here in, regarding our inventory, how we calculate our inventories here for throughput costing. And we'll look at uh, our cost flows and we'll also look at setting up our uh, operating income or determining our operating income based on this costing method. So when we talk about throughput costing, it's one of the inventory valuation methods that we use in cost accounting. And there's really four of them here. And the point I want to make here is with the throughput uh, basis here for costing. This is where you're going to have the least number of dollars into your in, in, included in your inventory cost here when you have throughput costing here. Okay, so what are we talking about with throughput costing? This is the case where we're really looking at concentrating here on our inventory, the amounts that's going to be capitalized in our inventory versus what is expensed here for the period here using, again, this throughput costing. So what we include in the inventory here with throughput is just the direct materials. Only direct materials here would be included in the inventory. The item, other items that are going to be expensed are going to be your direct labor your factory overhead, both the variable and fixed factory overhead here, and all those selling and administrative expenses, the variable and the fixed portion here. And when I talk about selling and administrative, I mean all those support functions, the engineering, the research and development, and so forth. They'd be lumped in here with your selling and administrative. But throughput costing, the only thing that gets included would be the direct material here going into the inventory. Everything else here gets expensed for the period when it when it's incurred here. Okay, so that's the our inventory capitalization here for throughput costing. Now let's go over here and look at the cost flow for throughput costing. Okay, so what I've got here showing, we're gonna have our factory costs here and then they're gonna flow into your, in this case it's gonna be raw and process, finished goods, and then our cost of goods sold. So uh, from our factory cost on up through here for all our inventories, they're an asset. But then when we get to the cost of goods sold, that's going to be uh, expensed here against the sales here for, in this case, our uh, throughput costing here. So we're going to be having, those costs are going to go into our inventory here. And then we're going to have all those other costs that we talked about, that all those other costs that we have here, there's going to be expensed here for the period. We'll go through that. And when we mean expensed, they're not going to be included in the, in the inventory here. They're just going to go over and they're going to be period costs that are going to be expensed for the period. Okay, so just for our cost flow here, and, and we're going to be looking at an income statement here based on this cost flow. All right, so let's, we start out with our factory costs here, and the only thing, again, that's included is the direct materials here. So there's direct material flow into what you'd normally call your work in process here. But in throughput costing, I call it raw and process here. Those, they refer to them as raw materials. So what you would do here for your raw and process or your work in process, you start with your beginning raw and process. Then you would add to it those direct materials that you've used here for the period. And then you'd have to subtract from that your ending raw in process here. And that's going to give you your cost of goods manufactured. Okay, so then your cost of goods manufactured flows into your finished goods, where you just take your beginning finished goods here, then you add to it the cost of goods manufactured here, essentially those direct materials, and then you would subtract from it the ending finished goods here. So that's going to give you your cost of goods sold here that you're going to be expensing off against your sales for the period here. And then just remember, all that factory overhead here and the direct labor, plus all that, uh, when we talk about factory overhead, the variable and fixed factory overhead here, plus the direct labor involved here, plus all those selling and administrative expenses, all these support functions here, direct and variable costs, they all get accumulated here and then they would be, uh, at, be expensed here as period costs, not included in, in the inventory here. Okay, so let's go and let's look at our uh, determining our operating income or essentially looking at our income statement here for throughput costing. Okay, so we really got six steps to go through here. And this income statement is based on that cost flow that we looked at here. So relate the cost flow that we looked at to this, this income statement to the cost flow. So we would start with our direct material used. Again, that would be our beginning materials that we have on hand, plus any purchase materials for the period, minus any ending materials on hand. That's going to give us our direct material that we've used. Then our manufacturing costs, you can see there are only those direct materials that we used here. 
that equals our total manufacturing cost. So this is our cost of goods manufactured. Just take your total manufacturing cost here. Add to it your beginning raw in process. Subtract your ending raw in process. That gives you your cost of goods manufactured here. So then for your cost of goods sold, that's just going to be your cost of goods manufactured plus your beginning finished goods minus any ending finished goods here. That gives you your cost of goods sold. So this is what they refer to. It's referred to as a throughput cost here or a throughput here. That's really taking your sales that you have for the period here, your sales dollars you have for the period, and subtracting from it your cost of goods sold that you have here. That difference gives you your throughput, as they refer to it as the throughput here. Then your operating income here is simply taking your throughput amount, and you would subtract from that your direct labor your fixed and variable factory overhead here, and then all those selling and administrative expenses, fixed and variable amounts. So subtracting all those from your throughput amount, that gives you your operating income. Okay, so just looking at it here, these cost of goods sold that you're looking at, that includes only the material costs here. And then your operating income here, you you have to deduct your direct labor, your variable and fixed manufacturing and non-manufacturing overheads here from your throughput here to determine your operating income. Okay, so that's pretty much what we're talking about with throughput costing here, or called super variable costing. All right, so we looked at it here from the, uh, from the cost flow aspect here for this costing method here. And then re you relate this cost flow that we were looking at to our Op, our income statement or our operating income here. All right, so that'll uh, summarize our talk topic here on throughput costing and as an inventory valuation method.